shocking discoveries this lens it's for a uh, well it doesn't even say actually <laughs> but uh, this does not fit this mini DV camcorder that I'm using to record this video with so so much for trying to use a wide angle lens and I gotta say we're off to a great start I tried using my uh, Sima, Sima, however you say that model SL7 halogen uh, video light that's totally dead I had it plugged in, uh, battery was warm, worked fine for like a minute, and then once I picked up the camera, it just went dead. So, I think this thing needs a new battery. I know unboxing videos are pretty much falling out of favor here on YouTube, but uh, this was a pretty good score, actually. Been looking for an HDV camcorder for uh, quite a while now. I, I have the HV20, the Canon HV20, but... I've been looking for a bit of an upgrade because, uh, well, why not? And the HV40 allows 24 progressive frames per second. Uh, video recording the HDV tape, and with that I've pretty much given away what's in this box if the title of the video hasn't already. Bought this in untested condition. Showed up pretty much the next day, so I guess they must have almost overnighted this thing to me to get it to me before Christmas, but I'm not complaining. I just realized what a great idea it is putting this on the uh, the chair right here. Acts like a makeshift Lazy Susan carousel. That wide angle lens would really come in handy right about now, but uh, oh wow, is this actually going to come in the original box? Got lots of uh, air bubble containers, blister packs, and uh, here it is. Wow, actually, and it's, uh, if I don't break it <laughs> before I even open it, the, uh, the original box that it came in, if you were to buy this new. It's kind of funny, something that uh, dates this camcorder is its sticker right here. Certified for Windows Vista. HD video lens, super range optical image stabilizer, instant autofocus. So it actually has a little infrared sensor here for the autofocus system. Digic DV2, that's I guess the image, the image processing, and uh, no, my finger is not uh, rotting away here, that's some magic marker that got on it. And this is its big claim to fame over the HV20 and the HV30, 24p, native progressive video, that's not recorded in a 60i uh, wrapper, and it also does 30p progressive, but that's in a 60i wrapper, which you have to uh, deal with a certain way during editing. It does say full HD 1080. That's a bit of a misnomer. HDV is 1440 by 1080. So it's not what a lot would consider, uh, a lot of people would consider full HD. HD CMOS image sensor. HDV mini DV compatible. It says kit. And then it gives us some battery duration specs for the LCD and the viewfinder. And the biggest battery that they ever made is the BP 2L24H. And I actually just bought one of these uh, off-brand uh, replacements for that model, uh, this specific model of battery, the highest capacity one, and the thing is tremendous. All right, enough beating around the bush. Let's uh, open it up, see what's inside. I think this was actually a uh, traded-in camera that uh, somebody traded in as a, to act as a sort of discount uh, to offset the purchase of a new camera. So I've got a whole instruction manual here. Yeah, 2009, everything else is still in here. Oh, there we go, making a mess already. And uh, before we get to the good stuff, I actually just noticed I saw a little, looks like a software CD hiding in here. I bet this thing's never seen the light of day. Yep, Canon Digital Video Solution Disk version 32 for Windows, so it comes with their uh, Zoom Browser EX. Yeah, aside from the uh, condensation buildup on it, it's cold outside. Yeah, it's got some scratches, so somebody's used this thing before. This is the battery that it came with. This is just the uh, the puny little 2L13, 7.4 volts, 1200 milliamp hours, 8.6 watt hours. So this thing is really small for a camcorder. Also got the uh, Canon wireless controller WL-D87 which is nice because these things sell all day for like ten dollars used and it's nice because you don't have to wear out the membrane 
uh, touchpad below the screen to uh, use the tape controls. Also have a uh, breakout cable for uh, component video. That's quite nice. And this, these camcorders use full-size HDMI ports. You don't have to go hunting around for an HDMI cable that'll work with the camera. You could just rob the one off your DVD player cable box and it'll work with these cameras. And here is the camera. It does show some signs of use on the uh, hand strap. I don't know what it is with this material that they always make camera hand straps out of, but it's like the cheapest cheapest material and it just ends up disintegrating, which you can probably see on the inside of that bag floating around. And it's all over in there. But uh, I'll probably just end up cleaning this off and then it leaves this, uh, this kind of matte gray material behind and I might just leave that alone or go over it with something like a paint pen or a sharpie but here it is and it actually looks to be in pretty acceptable condition not seeing anything that looks uh, telltale as to it possibly being uh, abused but there's that problem uh, DC input the jack is in there it's loose so if I were so inclined I could probably take this thing apart and uh, reattach it somehow using super glue screen is clean these buttons aren't totally worn out okay it looks like the screen was broken for a second but that's just condensation because it's very cold out and yeah these buttons always wear out they start blistering and then they just disintegrate practically that's why I, thankfully I have the remote control so I don't have to touch these and uh, mini SD card slot which I don't have one that's just for taking still photos because everybody asks on camcorder reviews you know if, some, if a camcorder like this has a, a memory card slot of some description that's like the first question can it record to that memory card no it can't only still images and then there's your speaker mini USB jack for accessing those photos low LED light for showing you your card access and charge uh, charging status display button and your LED light and some kind of a printing button focus control manual focus button a custom assignable button for uh, assigning a couple different things like a zebra pattern I think focus peaking uh, you could enable and change in the settings and then the record button your function button joystick this does not have a touch screen and uh, camera and play controls photo button zoom rocker which they have improved I know YouTube user view Westlife did a review of an HV20 and it had a very minuscule uh, zoom lever almost like it was broken off and was missing this little piece right here but th they've added that on and I think if I remember correctly this flap uh, the HV20 they're almost always lost because they don't have a tether to hold them in place but they actually oh wow they actually did they added a tether onto it so you don't lose this thing which explains why I see more of these camcorders with these little flaps than I do the HV20s. There's a switch over here for uh, going between auto and program modes. So if it's set to full auto, it pretty much locks you out of any kind of a manual control. Um, it just kind of is pretty much like Sony's easy mode. It just dumbs things down. I don't see any reason why I would ever use that. I just leave it on P. And then a little switch here for going between uh, the memory card and tape mode behind this little door is the microphone AV out and the component output the full-size HDMI and firewire ports are behind this little door all right we're getting right around the moment of truth here but I have to build this oh it comes with a free tape oh that's convenient because I can never have too many of those and I'm totally not being sarcastic I actually need many DV tapes so suffice it to say this battery is going to be totally dead but what's nice I actually have this uh, Canon battery charger that's for an old Canon XTI DSLR and it works with these NB-2LH batteries these batteries work on the HV20, HV30 and HV40 and this charger also charges these batteries 
Just for testing purposes, I've got this little pip squeak of a battery. This is for Canon DSLRs from this time period, and it works with these cameras. So this is what it came with. This is what I'm going to use, but it should be enough just to see if this thing even works or if it's hopelessly broken. I hope it works, and I hope it's just the, uh, the charger jack, but we're going to find out together. Unscripted and in real time. Okay. Does it work? Oop. That tape mechanism sounds a little cranky. But, uh, okay, I thought it was... Uh... So, yeah, this camera's been out in the cold all day. It's about 30 degrees right now, so that's why everything's fogging up on the inside. It looks like you're in a dream sequence, but uh, let's see if it'll actually... Oh, what's it doing now? Remove the cassette. Okay. Oh, come on. Oop. That didn't sound encouraging. Maybe it just needs to cycle through a couple of times. I mean, this thing hasn't been used in probably many years. Come on, please work. Oh, no, remove the cassette. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Oh, you know what I just noticed? That pinch roller is very loose in there. And that little white locking pin looks like it's about to fall out into the, uh, the camera. I'm actually going to get my other one now and see if uh, I can compare side by side, see what's not right with this thing. Okay, what's going on with the camera? It's like spazzing out. There we go, whack a Sony method to the rescue. Alright, we're making progress. It actually threaded the tape this time and then it just gave up. Oh, are we not going to eject the tape now? Come on. Nope, oh, this isn't good. Let's disconnect the battery. And uh, I know this isn't applicable to cannons, but never know. Might actually fix it. All right, it's oh oh no, it uh, tried eating our tape. That's not what I wanted it to do. Oh boy, oh that's a mess. It's all in here now. Oh come on, and it's all stuck under where the. Uh, Sometimes I guess you just, all right, well, I guess this tape, suffice to say, is going to be a sacrificial lamb. There's no way I'm putting a good tape in there. I just ate it. Oh, oh. Okay, it's going, okay. So it just went over the uh, chewed up section of the tape, so that's why it's beeping at us. But it actually got a time code. Yeah, now it's not happy. Yeah, I actually got the time code to show up on the screen. So I think I got to get it past that chewed up piece of the, the part of the tape. And it's not looking so hot there. All right, let's try something. Uh, this is uh, going to be take two, tape two. I have this uh, tape that just is labeled vacation that was in a thrift store camcorder. And uh, let's see what happens here. Let me try to get it rewinding as quickly as possible. Come on, come on. Rewind. Come on. Okay, it's actually rewinding now. So, the true test, of course, will be to see if it plays. Maybe that tape was just screwed up, although I've never seen that happen before. Oh, yeah, this tape was previously uh, spliced because it was also eaten by a camcorder. So I just saved that tape just to use on un camcorders of unknown condition, so if they eat the tape, it's no great loss. All right, let's see what happens. This is a standard def DV tape, so it should switch over any minute. Okay, it is playing as I record the camcorder screen of a video of somebody recording a TV screen. And it is playing. Somebody's snoring. This is 
some kind of a vacation video, I guess. I probably should just cut that whole section out that's all screwed up on the tape and splice it and call it good. Alright, let's see what's happening now. I kind of feel bad about doing this to somebody's vacation tape, but uh, they didn't care. It was in the garbage, so I'm just going to rewind to the beginning now and tape over a little bit and see what happens. In fact, you know what I'm going to do before I try that? I'm actually going to get my uh, cleaning tape and run it through here. All right, I've got my uh, Sony Mini DV cleaning cassette head cleaner tape. This thing's seen a lot of action lately, so I'll just press play, and I'll let this play for one, two, three, four, five, six. I know they say to play for ten seconds to clean the uh, the heads, but I try to get away with as little cleaning as possible because you are technically wearing away the heads every time you use these. And it's cycling through its loading procedure, spooling up the tape. So let's switch this over to uh, video mode. And it wants us to set the date and time. I'll do that off camera. It's already set to HDV, so I guess we'll just uh, we'll start recording with this thing for the first time in forever since the uh, previous owner put it away and ended up selling it. We're trading it in, but it's recording. Tape counter's working. Zoom works. Yep, zoom's working, and uh, it's nice and clear. Don't hear any strange sounds in here going on. No grinding or clicking. So, I'll rewind this now. It's going to go back? Come on. This battery's almost dead. That's why you can't use these on these camcorders. They don't last. Recording with this thing for the first time in forever since the uh, previous owner put it away and ended up selling it. We're trading it in. Okay. It's recording. Tape counter's working. Zoom works. Yep, zoom's working. And uh, it's nice and clear. Don't hear any strange sounds in here going on. No grinding or clicking. Now I should switch over to DB. There's this guy's uh, vacation footage. So, that's actually uh, uh, I would what I would call a success. So, uh, not too bad only had to sacrifice a mini DV tape and it was one that it came with so it's not a huge loss what I'll probably end up doing is cut off that mangled section of it splice it back together and throw it in here and use that to record until I fill it up so now with all that excitement out of the way I guess we should probably continue on with the uh, retrospective and review of this uh, ancient HDV camcorder because nobody uses tapes these days so there is a viewfinder here that is in color might just be able to see that the uh, microphones are up here uh, there really was no room for them so they put them up on top and it does pick up some tape motor noise but it's not that bad and I've actually realized that for um, these kind of YouTube style videos that I do it's almost better because with me speaking primarily just at the camera all the time um, and not recording noise and sounds from in front of it this picks up my voice a little better. Optical image stabilizer. Um, it's beeping at us now because it wants to turn off. The screen sounds a little stiff. I'm hoping that... Uh, yes, I know. Don't turn off. Oh, at any rate, it's it's holding in place. It's nice and stiff. It's not flopping around. You use these uh, this joystick over here to get through the menus. So, the way most Canons are of this time period is you press this in. You can turn on backlight compensation exposure adjustments you can turn the mic level on and off and that's pretty much it for that um, oh that actually replays the uh, last section of the tape that you just recorded yeah that's just so you could review it to make sure it recorded fine but there's so much lag it uh, it's not playing now because it's still an HDV mode for recording videos even though that's a DV tape uh, function 
I have program auto exposure. Let's try zooming this in actually. That's a little better. Yeah, program auto exposure, shutter priority, aperture, the cinema mode, which uh, changes the uh, the color characteristics of the video it records. And you're supposed to use this in conjunction with the 24p mode for recording cinematic videos. Also portrait, but usually I just leave it on program AE. That works fine. And then there's some white balance settings. And what's nice about Canon's is you can just hold something up that's white. Uh, I actually only have this uh, little holder here for uh, electrical connectors, but that's white. And you can see on the screen that it's blue. It's got a blue color cast because the white balance isn't totally accurate. But if I cycle that to evaluative white balance and press the set button, it'll actually calibrate it and adjust it so it's the correct white balance now. And there's image effects like vivid, neutral, low sharpening, soft skin detail. And then if you go to custom, you could cycle through different things like color depth. You can adjust the sharpness. Uh, three different ways. There's low, medium, high, contrast, brightness, color depth, so that's saturation. Just leave everything the way it is for now on the default settings. A couple of picture effects like a fader, uh, wipe, black and white, sepia. Probably help if you had something on screen to look at. And art, which definitely looks like a colorized uh, cartoon almost. And then the still image recording setting for the photo quality. Uh, turn it off, 1920 by 1080, 848 by 480. And then the actual menu system is in here. There's a auto slow shutter, which I believe show, slows the shutter speed down if it gets too dark. So you'll start getting smeary, blurry video, but it will be brighter. You turn that off. Digital zoom, leave that off. The zoom speed. Uh, is currently set to variable, but you can lock it at three different speeds. And the autofocus mode is normal or instant. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want it on instant autofocus. And the stabilizer is on, the self timer is off. HD standard, this is where it gets interesting. So you can record regular 60i interlaced video, 1440 by 1080 to tape. Then you could record progressive frame 30 or progressive frame 24. This is what they're calling a progressive uh, segmented video. Uh, there's some abbreviation by which these are referred to as in the industry, but it just records 30 frames per second, 29.97 FPS or uh, 23.976 FPS to uh, in a 60i wrapper. So if you import this video from the camcorder to your computer and edit it, or read the media info, it will report it as 60i. If it's a 24p, uh, p recorded with PF24, it's my understanding you actually have to go through a pull-down procedure to, if you want to restore those uh, progressive frames. And if it's recorded with PF30, uh, it's I've just recently discovered uh, that you can just set your uh, video editing program to progressive and ignore, even though it thinks it's interlaced, just set it to progressive and that will restore the uh, progressive uh, frames. And in this feature, this is the mode that's talked about a lot on the HV40s, or was back when they were new. This 24F mode records a true 23.976 progressive video to the tape. So if you import this using HDV split or anything else, it'll actually show as being 24P video. It won't be 60i. And then there's regular DV wide and DV normal and the windscreen. I actually turn this off because it's my experience with a lot of cameras that if you leave it on it actually kills the uh, low end frequencies a little too much for my liking. And then the very useful mic attenuation feature for uh, attenuating either the built in microphone or the microphone jack. So if you're recording like a line level source and you don't have a uh, any way to attenuate it, you could do it in camera. And then the file numbering for still images uh, AV phones. I usually set this to phones so that way when you have headphones plugged into this uh, AV out jack it, you can monitor the audio because I never use it with an external display and then you can adjust the volume and adjust the component output to either 40i or 1080i 40i combo. Brightness 
And then a couple other kind of prosumer oriented features. You have an on screen marker, you could set it to white or gray. I could do zebras 70%, 100%, or peaking. Audio levels, I always turn that on just to keep an eye on uh, what levels the audio is being recorded at. And then uh, system info. This is where you can adjust the. Uh, you turn the magnifier key on, which is this. The HV20 did not have that. It'll zoom in the image. And then the custom key. So you could set it to do backlight compensation. And then you could set it to do markers, but I just leave the marker on all the time. So I actually usually set this to assist function. And now, if I press that custom button right here, we've got, uh, I believe that's 70% zebras. And then finally is uh, focus peaking, which I think sharpens the image to accentuate whether or not you have something in focus. And you can just turn that off. And I could also, yes, I know to change the battery pack, press the magnify button now, now that I turned it on. You notice on screen it now says magnify record. It'll actually record the video to the tape zoomed in like this. Don't really see any reason why you would do this over optical zoom unless you're just trying to zoom in a little bit more and the zoom is maxed out. So you just use this magnify feature. But it's nice to have. And this battery's almost totally dead now. Oh yeah, before this goes dead, just press the, uh, the light button and that lights up. It is very blue in color and that does come across as very blue on video. But I haven't had any problems with it and it's definitely, it was a step in the right direction when these were new. Because so many camcorders, even to this day, they don't even have any kind of an LED light. So if you're in a dark situation, you're just, you're out of luck. Well, on today's episode of getting more than you bargain for in video form, I present how I am going to attempt to splice a tape in what is going to be likely described as the worst way possible by those in the viewing audience. But otherwise, not going to do anything with this tape except throw it out. So if I could try to fix it and uh, get a working mini DV tape, all the better. Okay, so you're probably wondering what the scotch tape is for. Anybody who's ever dealt with one of these tapes before and has had to splice them but doesn't want to take the whole thing apart. Actually, I don't even think you could do that on this style tape because it's uh, there's no screws in there. It's rather surprising. Is you need to hold this protective flap back out of the way. Easiest way to do that's with some scotch tape. All right, I've got that uh, out of the way. Now the tweezers are for depressing this little stopper that keeps the tape from getting free spooled out. And if I hold this in place now. I should just be able to, yep, pull the tape out like that. Okay, yeah, that could definitely cause a problem. That tape is really chewed up. And on top of that, I'm also seeing, uh, it's not going to translate onto video too well, but I'm seeing spots that have, uh, looks like lubricant. Has that already been spliced? That tape looks like it's already been spliced. Either way, it's got grease all over from the uh, the mechanism. So that can't stay. Seems like the last good part's right about here, so just gonna come on. Just gonna cut this as best I can. And uh, this side looks a little better, so I'll leave some slack to work with. I'll just cut that right there. Now we could look at uh, yeah, that's that's really bad news. <laughs> I'm almost wondering if maybe the um, the tape was at fault and that's what was causing the problems because if you look in the light there's uh, the telltale signs of grease on here and, and lubrication all those spots that'll get on the heads and clog it up like nothing and then you can see the backside how uh, it looks oily so that's all garbage don't need that anymore this is arguably the part that uh, is always the, uh, well it just sucks. And that is trying to get these ends to cooperate without mangling them and getting to a worse place than you started with and uh, splicing them together. But I've got my little piece of tape here and what I'll actually do is uh, stick it on the end. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Uh, I want to get this into position as easily as possible, but I suspect this is probably going to put up a fight. 
you know what we're going to do? We're just going to use the magic of video editing to skip ahead in time after quite a bit of swearing and this tape will magically be repaired like... Well, it's not pretty, but uh, it's certainly better than what we started with. And, uh, yeah, it's not even in frame. That's just great. Let's try that again. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what we started with. And uh, hopefully, since I could just barely see it with my naked eye, the camera won't notice that anything's uh, majorly wrong. And it looks pretty good. And you could tell, definitely tell it was spliced, but uh, it's an improvement. Well, round two off camera because I wasn't too happy with uh, how it turned out before. I'm still not happy with it, but uh, at this point I'm probably the only person that would spend this much uh, time on a chewed up tape. Anybody else would just throw it out, <laughs> but uh, I just can't get my bring myself to do that. So time to close the flap, put this in that camcorder and see what happens. All right, I mean, what could go wrong? We already uh, had a previous tape eating incident with this tape. Let's see if it uh, happens again. I'm hoping it doesn't. Oh, remove the cassette. So is it something wrong with this tape? All right, I guess the tape must be screwed up. That is bizarre. Okay, hopefully third time is the charm with this tape. I just put it in my Canon GL1 and the break was at the very beginning of the tape so I just skipped past that point and I'll just make a note not to rewind this tape all the way I'm just going to use it to record on once and uh, this thing's still complaining of a dead battery so must, this must have a very sensitive mechanism and if it notices any kind of undue friction or resistance it'll just throw up an error so I just gotta remember not to uh, rewind it all the way but this is uh, somebody's party or something. And you could use the uh, zoom lever to zoom in to that guy eating his, uh, his food. <laughs> well, at least the, the break was at the very beginning of the tape. Because the tape is still good. I just won't rewind it all the way. Um, but I'm spending too much time and uh, energy now talking about uh, derelict uh, chewed up tapes that I've since repaired. Like I said, anybody else would have just thrown it in the trash, but uh, a free tape is a tape for me. So now it works, and so does this camcorder. Well, this should help me uh, get the message if I ever forget. Just wrote a bunch of reminders all over the tape not to rewind it all the way. And uh, leave five minutes in the beginning, and uh, use that just fine now. I would have to say I probably came out ahead with a camcorder that was previously written off and left for dead. I almost am wondering if perhaps it was the tape that was causing the problems when I first brought power to this thing and it said reinsert, cons reinsert cassette and started blinking and beeping. I'm almost wondering if maybe that's what happened or perhaps that tape got screwed up when this thing probably was on a tripod and somebody walked by and dragged it down and it fell breaking the uh, little DC power jack off inside the camera and maybe screwing up the tape and possibly misaligning the tape mechanism. And perhaps my uh, giving it a couple of firm wax on its underside is all that was necessary to get it back up in ship shape. Okay, first official recording test on the uh, Canon Vixia HV40 HDV camcorder. Here is what I was using to uh, record the beginning of this video with with an infolithium battery that at first was throwing an infolithium error wasn't turning on uh, rather the camera would turn on but then it would complain that it wasn't an infolithium battery and immediately turn off and it just started working fine so I don't know what was going on with that but I've got tape shrapnel just about everywhere and splicing tape and pieces of the hand strap everywhere but it seems like this is uh, recording fine now and here's my uh, ancient iPhone 7 that uh, just had the uh, screen repaired. So I just don't have the time or desire to uh, get a new phone right now, right before uh, the holidays. Because I actually ended up dropping it on the ground and it hit a little uh, patio paver right here. And uh, the entire upper third of the screen was totally shattered. It was literally like you took a hammer to the screen. LED light definitely helps to shed some light on the subject. <laughs>
Guess while I'm at it, uh, I'm going to try to switch over to 24p mode on here, but because I'm going to be working primarily with uh, DV NTSC video at uh, 60i 29.97 frames per second, I'm going to use the PF24 mode, so it should work just fine in my workflow. But you know what I just forgot to do? I forgot to switch on the Cinetone mode, which should look make this look more movie-like. So this is at 24p which is very jerky, I have to realize that I can't move the camera as much uh, without getting uh, motion sickness, but let me turn on Cinetone see if that changes anything alright, I just realized it's not called Cinetone it's called Cinemode and uh, yeah, the colors and the saturation is a little different and the autofocus is definitely a lot slower in, uh, in this mode well, there's the battery that uh, this camcorder came with, and uh, it actually seems like it's taken a charge. Uh, only time will tell if it actually maintains that charge for a reasonable length of time, but right now it, it is charging, it's not flashing. And I just realized that the battery is actually color-coded to the camera. It's actually black in color, whereas the one on my HV20 is gray. Overall, I have to say that I am quite pleased that uh, this camcorder is working just fine and uh, hasn't needed any kind of a repair. Here's a quick music test through the uh, built-in microphones. One last little test, we'll uh, see how that instant autofocus works. I'm zoomed in all the way move that to the side. Yeah, that's pretty fast actually. And the steady shot or uh, Canon's optical image stabilization is working admirably. It's not shaky. Zoomed all the way in. That's actually very steady. going to be a driving test, uh, also a low light test, the HV40. It's at, recording at 60i right now, so it shouldn't be uh, very blurry and smeary like it gets in uh, 24p mode. What are you waiting for? That's grown into it. You know, all the Christmas decorations up. We partially launched a new technology platform developed by another firm. Some Christmas decorations here on this uh, the front of this TJ Maxx. Uh, camera's out of focus, but uh, definitely uh, gets you that shallow depth of field look that people are striving to get with uh, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. I turned the uh, vehicle off, but it's a little too cold outside. Going down to 27 degrees tonight. No thank you. I'd rather not freeze. Always live on the free Odyssey app. I better watch that. We don't want copyright problems. Got a Christmas tree farm up ahead. Or the closest thing to it. And the Mod Haven houses along East 141st Street. Glenn lives across the street and heard the gunfire. First, the 
shots came slow. And then at the Shore City Transit and his chief of security came to City Hall to testify before the council on measures to improve riders' safety. Transit safety behind seven RMTA deficit. 